Country Ways, Sheridan Valley Channel's newest program on rural living. I'm your host. My name is Jim Walker. Those who are regular viewers of CVTV will recognize me as a Sheridan Valley employee. And if you live in the Huntsville area, you also know me as your neighbor. If this is your first time tuning in to CVTV, we are happy to make your acquaintance. We hope you will come back often. Country Ways is a program that captures the essence of rural living as it used to be and as it still is for some. We will bring you a new episode about every two weeks with the program repeating on Saturday and Sunday. We have a lot of different programs in store for you and most will feature some form of activity on the farm. Now the spring is here, it is time to start planting the vegetable garden. This year we are going to take a different approach by plowing and cultivating our garden with halflinger ponies. Halflingers are a small draft breed noted for their strength and for their gentle dispositions. But mine have never been hitched to the plow, so this might get interesting. When working with horses, the team is only one third of the equation when it comes to tilling the land. Another third is the teamster and what skills he brings to the team. And the final one third is using the appropriate equipment. When selecting a plow, consideration needs to be given to the type of land you'll be plowing, the strength of your team, and what crops will be planted. Since the size of the garden we will be plowing is relatively small, I'll be using a walking plow, so named because you walk behind it. I have four different models for us to consider. When I first acquired these old plows, they were not field ready as they had no handles, which is not surprising since the handles are made of wood and these plows range from 75 to 100 years old. But the plow shares, the mold boards are in good condition, as are the beams, which made them very restorable. This first plow is an international harvester. It would have been used to turn under heavy soil with a lot of vegetation. The culture mounted on the beam would have helped to slice the soil and help turn it under. It would have required a stout team to pull that plow all day. This is a John Deere plow. And yes, the black paint is original. Although it is a bit large for my pony teams to pull, I have restored it for the antique value and the history it represents. This is a right hand plow, which means it throws the dirt to the right. When using this type of plow, you cannot simply turn around at the end of the row and return along the furrow just plowed. If you do, the soil sliced out by the plow will fall onto the soil you have just turned over. When plowing a large field, the plowman would plow around the field, gradually narrowing the unplowed strip of land. When plowing a smaller area, such as a garden plot, I find it easier to plow up one side of the field and down the other, eventually meeting in the middle. Third type of uh, horse-drawn walking plow. This is manufactured by the Lynchburg Plow Works in Lynchburg, Tennessee. They stopped using that name in 1910 so we know the plow is uh, somewhere in, in the neighborhood of 100 years old. It is uh, slightly different from the first two we looked at, while still a turning plow, and it would appear just to look at it that the uh, plow, uh, the mold board and the, the plow share are a bit smaller. This plow is actually quite a bit heavier, and there's a reason for it. Whereas all the plows we've seen so far turn the furrow, uh, the ground that you're plowing up, to the right, this plow is actually uh, is a reversible, it's called a hillside plow, and the entire bottom will swivel so you can go right back the way you came. Let me show you how this works. If I can turn this thing around. You see here, we have a lever that you can hit with your foot, and <clears throat> turn it back around so you can see, see the action of it. When you hit that, when you're at the end of your row, Lay it over this way. 
And now we have a plow that is going just the opposite of the way it had been. That's important because it enables you to plow, turn around, and come right back the same way. With the first two plows we looked at, what you'd have to do is plow in a circle to avoid leaving what's called a dead furrow. With this one, you can simply go back and forth and back and forth. This plow, I acquired it from a, uh, a person in Tennessee. I imagine it's seen a lot of work on the Tennessee uh, hills and mountains, but it's still in just excellent condition, as good as the day that it was first manufactured. Of the three that we have looked at, this would be the one you'd pick to plow a garden with, but there's still other options. We've got one more plow to take a look at. This is a wooden beamed garden plow. This is just what we've been looking for, for a small garden. As you can see, it is much smaller, much lighter than the others. It is made for uh, a small garden. Around the turn of the uh, last century, come into the early 1900s, this plow sold for three dollars. I don't know what the manufacturer's name uh, is of this one because on the smaller plows, the manufacturer's name was generally painted on the handle, and of course, uh, the original handles have been long gone. As you can no notice from the uh, photograph on your screen, when I acquired this plow and another one just like it, they were in a really sad state of repair, but fortunately, the beam on one of them was still intact enough to make us a pattern. And so we acquired uh, some good solid oak wood, uh, crafted the beam, uh, took it apart, sanded everything down, painted, put it back together. This one still isn't quite complete. As you can notice on the end of it, it's missing a clevis. We're going to put one uh, on it. We'll be ready to go with it. Just to give you uh, an idea of the, uh, the work that goes into restoring these old plows, we have another one just like this that is totally uh, disassembled, and we'll go ahead and put it together. It won't take long at all. Here is the, uh, the bottom or the mold board plow share of a garden plow, just like the one that uh, I showed you with the wooden beam. I think these are uh, manufactured by the same company, although there are some differences. But when we went to restore it, as uh, again, uh, as you can see from the photograph on your screen, all we had was uh, uh, just portions of the plow. It was rusty. There was some question in my mind as to whether or not we could actually bring it back. But we took it uh, apart as far down as I could get the bolts out. Uh, we cut some of them off. We replaced uh, them. Uh, and then we took a, a sander to it, uh, a wire brush and sandpaper, got as much of the rust off as we could, and then we repainted it. As I told you earlier, I don't know who the original manufacturer was, but painting something uh, from that era red and black is pretty uh, likely to be correct because that's how most of them were painted. That was a paint uh, scheme. But <clears throat> this one uh, is in uh, very, very good condition. But all we have here is the plow bottom. We still had to put it together. When we acquired this old plow, it had a, a beam with it. Here's uh, what it looked like. Sit here like this. You can see uh, its useful days are over, but fortunately it is intact enough that we were able to use it for a pattern. So we went to the sawmill, had a piece of two by six oak cut out for us. I've, I've still got a piece of it left. Uh, when you go to the sawmill and get it, they cut it, uh, it's, it was true cut. So you can see it is, was a, uh, a big uh, heavy piece of wood. And from that, we crafted a new uh, plow beam. Uh, it's in on the exact same uh, configuration as the original, and it should work uh, just as good. So why don't we go ahead and put the beam uh, on the plow share itself. As we prepared this to be put on the plow, we had to drill holes in it, as you can see. There are two holes that mounted it uh, here. One, th uh, one of the things that we ran into is that the holes that were intended for the, uh, the bolts are actually square or rectangular and we couldn't find anything that, would, uh, that we had here in the shop that would fit down in there so we had to grind uh, those out. had my good friend Charlie Magruder, you uh, folks in Huntsville are sure acquainted with Charlie, he ground that out for me and we were uh, soon in business. But the 
the beam sets here with uh, uh, we didn't try and use the original bolts back out of it. They were uh, well worn and uh, we thought it'd be best if we just went ahead and replaced them. So we've got these two large bolts. The spacer on top is the original that came with the plow. So we'll get these back on. things we noticed as we started to put this plow uh, together is that this shaft right here is actually bent and because it is bent it wants to uh, have the, uh, the beam itself tilt to the right but there's a way to correct that we give some consideration to having it uh, putting it in a, a press and trying to bend it back so I was concerned that if we did that uh, there was a possibility that it would uh, do some damage to it and didn't want to run that risk so what we have opted to do instead is we just put a shiv, a little piece of wood, under and it, it brings it right back uh, uh, level to where we want it. We've got our shiv in place, got the bolts tightening up. They still haven't quite seated up as tight as they need to be. But all of this, up to this point, has come together pretty nicely, I think. What we need to do next is go ahead and drive those bolts on up in there a little bit. But remember, they weren't made precisely for this. It may not see it all the way. I think we got it on there tight enough that it's going to hold. Next we need to put on are the handles. <clears throat> Plow handles are made of oak. For this particular plow, we went ahead and measured and determined what we were going to have to do uh, as far as drilling holes. Now, uh, when you are putting a uh, a brace between these two handles, you couldn't simply lay the handles one on top of the other and drill the holes so they'd be in the exact spaces. Because if you do that, the holes go through uh, at a 90 degree angle and the cross piece or the brace is not going to enter at a 90 degree angle and so it would be off. Just give you that as a pointer in case you start to put one back together yourself. But we determined on uh, this plow where the uh, uh, bolt holes will be located and from there we uh, went ahead and pre-drilled the holes. Now we have two braces uh, on, the, on the handle. We have a metal brace and we acquired it just as a, uh, a straight rod. We put the threads on it, uh, measured it and cut it to fit and then we have a wooden brace as well. There were two ways we who experimented and have seen wooden braces put on. As you can see, we have partially uh, drilled it so that it has a place to seat and to tighten up against. Another way to do that is to drill it all the way through and then put a pin in from the bottom. On some of the heavier plows, we opted to do that. On this one, we decided we would try just a little bit different approach. Turn the plow around and give you a, a look at the what's called the land side of it. As you can see, we put in new bolts. It's uh, sturdy. And it's against one of the bolts. In fact, you can't see it, but there's another one there that this handle uh, hooks to. We bolt, bolt it in at the bottom, and then we bolt it in up here. We cut this notch out in the uh, beam. Let's see if we can get this bolt to go through here. You have to put the, the handle on this side on first, otherwise, it will block off uh, your ability to put the other handle on. But it's going on uh, pretty easily. We put it, uh, <clears throat> and we have another bolt to hold it up here.
this bolt protrudes through a little further than what I like, we'll cut that off. We'll go ahead and get everything snugged down first. The handles are uh, designed to keep you about waist high. And most of mine do, the, uh, they all hit you, hook on just a little bit different than uh, the other. And so there's, it's uh, at times uh, uh, a little bit different where they, they come up to you, but they, they all hit right about, about waist high. And remember that if you ever use a plow like this, the animal does the work. All you're doing is guiding the plow. You don't, uh, you don't push it, uh, the animal pulls it. And you wear yourself out if you think you're going to help him uh, by, by pushing the back of it. So actually, if you've got a good broke team and your equipment's in good shape, the plow just glides right on through the soil uh, with very little effort on the part of the teamster as far as handling the plow. The effort is in uh, walking. It's been calculated that for, uh, if you plow an acre of land, you walk 9.9 .9 miles. We've got that handle on. Now see if we can get the other one to go on as well. It uh, bolts up just a bit differently. I'll turn this around so you can get a, a look at it. What we're doing here, we're going to uh, bolt onto this handle here. There's two bolt holes. I like to put one bolt in uh, from one direction and then reverse it with the other. Uh, but this one uh, should go right on uh, very easily. Of course, they all go on, on easily if you can find all your bolts, and here's the one we're looking for. We'll tighten this down. These plows actually uh, are made the way the handles are that uh, it looks like it's running crooked, but in fact it isn't. It's just how uh, the handles hook up to it. Well, we've got the handles on. We need to make sure that we get them braced. <clears throat> to, to brace the handle, as I said, we had we cut a uh, metal rod and we uh, had pre-drilled the holes so that uh, we get it uh, to start through here. We'll be uh, just about ready to put it uh, put this one in the dirt. Putting the plow uh, back together is the easy part. Uh, I don't know if there's really a, a fun part to it. I guess uh, one thing that we always look for is, is trying to find a name on, on the plow. And I couldn't find one on this one, but I found a plow that looks an awful lot like it uh, in a catalog from, that, uh, from about 1898, and it was made by Oliver Plow Company. I don't want to tighten that down too much until I get the, the cross piece in here that uh, we've made. The two of them together give you uh, a good sturdy uh,
One more thing to do, this plow will be ready. You need to put a clevis on the front of it. The original plow, as it came to me, did not have a clevis on it. My good friend Bob Lockard in Salisbury happened to have an extra uh, clevis in his barn that he was kind enough to let me have. <clears throat> Bob is a, uh, just an excellent uh, uh, teamster in his own right. He raises half-linger ponies the same as uh, the kind that I raise, and he has just uh, an excellent little stallion over there. If anybody's looking for a good pony to breed to, uh, Bob has one, and so do we. We tighten this up, and this plow is ready to go. There's one uh, piece that's still missing that uh, I'm not going to tighten this all the way down because we're going to add to it. We're going to put a metal brace right here with a, a hole in it for that bolt to go through so that it's pulling uh, against the, uh, the steel as opposed to the wood of the, the plow itself. These uh, uh, little plow is virtually ready to go to the field. I'm going to set it down here beside of the other just so you can see how much smaller that it actually is. The beam is only a fraction the size of the John Deere and the International Harvester. But it's plenty big to do the job that we have in mind of working our garden. And so, as far as being able to turn the soil, we're ready to go. Next time on Country Ways, we'll take another look at some more rusty iron. Only this time we'll be looking at cultivating plows as opposed to turning plows. We've had a number of those uh, come through the shop. We've got handles in them, and they're filled ready uh, also. Until then, I've got a lot of work to do oiling up some harness. We hope you've enjoyed your visit with us, and we hope you'll join us again right here on Country Ways on the Sheridan Valley Channel.